Next up, our representative from Pete Konechi's campaign. Keith, and I know I'm going to spell it, pronounce your last name wrong. Ken Nika. Thank you. Okay, it's Kazi Anka. There's a test on that at the end of the evening. Uh, not a lot of uh, time for political rhetoric. Instead, I've got a plan here that my uh, my boss, my new boss, Pete Kadechi, <clears throat> running for U.S. Senate, uh, his whole platform is right here in this this little book. It's a, it's a pocket constitution. Okay, anything that's constitutional, you're going to see Pete Kadechi. Uh, support anything that's not constitutional let's do away with it simple as that uh, a little bit about Pete he's a businessman he's never been a politician he's never run for political office uh, he as a matter of fact it was kind of endearing when I first met him we walked on his property he has about 70 acres down in Ross Common and there's a little one bedroom shack of a house and that's where he and his family started out he's a Michigan State graduate in accounting and his first computer, we said, was the size of his living room. But he created software that many attorneys' offices use nationwide nowadays. And that was his niche. Uh, so when you talk about a self-made businessman, uh, he did that. But he, uh, he really had no intentions of, of running for office until a lot, of, a lot of people like you here said, enough is enough, to borrow from a friend of mine. And uh, we got to change this thing. You know, basically, if, if the federal government were following the Constitution as written, we wouldn't be in any of the trouble that we're in now. Can you imagine, just, just uh, imagine, Monday morning, the EPA gets a pink slip, okay? <laughs> because there's nowhere in the Constitution that provides for the Environmental Protection Agency, okay? How many mines in the state of Michigan, how much forestry would be uh, accomplished without that red tape. You know, when the people or the states take on a project or oversee a project, it, it flourishes. When the federal government does it, time and time again, what do we get? Okay, so everything the federal government is allowed to do is in this book. It's under Article uh, 1, Section 8, and Article 1, Section 9. If it's not there, the federal government can't do it. It's very simple. It, it, it spells out what the federal government can do. The federal government can only do what the people or the states cannot do. Okay? Uh, patents, uh, uh, means of uh, weights and scales. Uh, a military, okay? One commander in chief, there can't be 50. Uh, simple things like that. That's what the federal government's there to do. And if it's not there, they can't be involved in it. We're violating our Constitution, okay? Uh, I know everybody running for this office right now, uh, the, the Senate seat, are good people. I don't think there's ever you know, any bad people with bad intentions. But they all have different plans. And what I'd like you to do as an educated electorate is to get onto Pete Konechi's website. It's konechi.us. And look at his positions. Now, the man has written over 30 position papers on that. Uh, everything from abortion to immigration to uh, Social Security, uh, uh, every, every uh, the budget, how to balance the budget, everything is there. A lot of these papers were written in 2010, as a matter of fact. I've never worked for anybody, I've worked a lot of campaigns, where every position is in writing. Okay, there's, there's no cloudy area, no gray area there. And uh, if you agree with it, that's where he stands. He has solutions to everything that we're asking for. It's all constitutional. Uh, when you give it to the free market, the free market flourishes. Okay, I'll give you an example is energy independence. You know, the United States has more oil than the o OPEC countries combined in the continental US. If we were allowed to have the free market drill that oil, not only would it be energy independent, and the price of gasoline would come down to whatever the fair market value is because there would be competition, there would be many jobs, 
there'd be $30 billion a month that we wouldn't be sending overseas to our enemies. And we could be an energy exporter, like Canada. You know, we could be the OPEC countries. Uh, things like that, that's, it's very simple. There's, there's nothing in the Constitution saying that the government has the right to have a Department of Energy. Uh, Department of Education. That department needs to go today, okay? All it has done is dumb down our people, our students. See, <laughs> when you say something like, we're going to take away your small arms, okay? We're going to do away with the Second Amendment. This generation here is going to fight them, and they know that. But if we can put things in the school books that are in the school books today, over generations, we'll have them softened up enough to where they feel that the United States is no different than any, any other country in the world. And that's what we're teaching our kids. Not that the United States is the greatest country in the world, because we're free, but no, we're, we're a one world government, okay? We want our kids learning the same thing here as they do in Libya, okay? We don't want to teach math, science, history, real history. We want to teach acceptance. We want to teach uh, how, to, how to get along with, with, with those that are, are possibly different than us. And, and uh, sex education and all these different things that are in the school books now that I just, you know, I don't agree with. And the federal government gives very little money to the, the educational system, but they dictate what is being taught. Okay? A lot of these policies come from the United Nations. Okay? We're participating in the United Nations. I personally think we should say to the United Nations goodbye. It's been nice, but we really have no use for you now. Okay? We don't want your agendas in the United States. We're, we're a separate and free people. And when I first started working on campaigns, uh, I was, I was there to hope to change the, the uh, government, change the society for better, and to protect our freedoms. I don't feel like that anymore. I think that day has gone by. Ronald Reagan said, freedom is one generation away. It's generational. We already lost it, okay? Now what I'm campaigning for is to take back our government and take back our freedoms. We have the candidate to do that, Pete Konechi, because we lost it, okay? If you don't believe in me, if you think that the government feels, uh, fears us and, and uh, the people don't fear the government, what would you do if tomorrow morning there was three IRS agents and one Homeland Defense or Department of Homeland Defense agent at your front door? Would that be a positive thing? Would you welcome them? Say, come on in, guys. It's great to see you. Doesn't mean they're leaving. You know, <laughs> no, the typical American would fear that because they would say, what did I do wrong? I didn't do anything wrong. Why are these people here? That's wrong, okay? We've gotten so far away from what, what we started, from the Constitution, from how it was set up, that uh, we're almost brainwashed into thinking this is normal. It's not, okay? The government should answer to the people, and the people should not fear the government. It's simple. It's all in the Constitution. Uh, we have a guy that, uh, uh, well... He's probably the most brilliant constitutional person I've ever met. I've never seen anybody stump him on anything. He has it in writing on his website. Please go to his website, or if you want materials mailed to you, I can certainly do that to you. i do that for you. I'm sorry. Um, but there's, there's every position there is, and how we solve our problems, how we have a balanced budget, and how to balance the budget within, and keep it balanced. Okay, actual plans, actual, this is what we do, A, B, and C. And it'll work. But, uh, you know, we got to get people to vote, take a look at all the candidates, look at their policy, see what they stand for, and then vote for the best choice you have. I don't have any use for the word electability, okay? Peter is a great candidate. If he needs his name recognition put out there, which he needs, because a lot of people say, who, who the heck's Pete Kanechi? Uh, can't even pronounce Kanechi. That's what I'm here for. That's what the camp here's, campaign's here for. We'll get him name recognition. I guarantee it. Okay? If he needs money to run, that's what we're here for. We'll provide him with the money to run. But please look at all the candidates, educate yourself on them, and make the best decision. That's all we ask. Thank you very much.